as the medical school application cycle is approaching, many of you are sitting at your desks just like I was a year ago, trying to craft the perfect medical school application to really wow those medical school admissions committees. Now, a big part of that is your personal statement. And in this video, I'll be going through my personal statement that allowed me to get into medical school, showing it to you, breaking it down with you, and also most importantly, talking about how to stay authentic in your writing process. Let's get started. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on this video. For those of you who may be new to my channel, my name is Terrence. I'm an accepted medical school applicant and I'll be starting medical school this upcoming August of 2020. Now, when it comes to the personal statement, I've heard different sides of the spectrum when it comes to its importance and how much it's weighed in the application process and actually gaining admission. I've heard one side of the spectrum where admissions committee member told me that they just really skimmed through it or he personally just skims through it and doesn't really weigh it that much when it comes to uh, your other things and your applications like your grades, GPA and your, and your AMCAS activities. But I've also heard other sides of the spectrum where it's very important in the admissions process where if you craft a great personal statement, it can make up for a lack of uh, your other areas. So regardless, it's important to you know, really craft a personal statement that tells your story, best reflects you, uh, tells why you want to become a doctor, why you believe that you will be a great doctor and gives really evidence to defend all these points. Yes, this is a very challenging thing to do in just 5,300 characters. But the most important thing to do is get yourself started. So there are two points I really want to hammer home in this video. The first is remaining authentic as possible and also keeping your integrity. So a big lesson that I learned in this process was you don't really want to tell the admissions committees what they want to hear, but rather just tell your story and let it speak for itself. I personally didn't feel like I had a captivating story. I didn't feel like I had enough flair. I didn't have enough pop. I wasn't one of those people that always wanted to be a doctor since they were young. I didn't have any really doctors in my immediate family. I didn't have a story where I had a, a loved one that was in the hospital and the doctor came up to me and really uh, I was enamored by the, the physician and I really you know, was drawn to medicine ever since. I wasn't personally uh, inflicted with an injury or, or a chronic disease or anything crazy like that where I would have had a story where the physician really uh, touched me or, or really had a everlasting impact on my decision to go into medicine. I just really came up with this idea of wanting to be a doctor a few years back and I felt like that was something that I lacked and I didn't have that flair or that pop. But what I soon to learn was that I really just had to tell my story, tell my story of why I wanted to be a doctor, share my interest in the passion of medicine and also, you know, just tell my story and let the admissions committees uh, determine for themselves whether or not I'd be a good applicant for their school. So I'm going to put my personal statement on the screen here and I'm going to detail it from paragraph to paragraph, kind of talking about what the intentions of each paragraph were and how I use those uh, details from my life and my experiences to kind of create uh, my story and ultimately get to my finish line of, you know, being passionate about becoming a doctor. If you're interested in getting the full thing, uh, my email is in the description, so you can email me if you're interested in kind of using mine as a template for your uh, personal straight statement draft. I wanna first start off by the intro here, and the main element of my personal statement and the main theme is me going from a college basketball player to a pre-med student, and how I gained all these different experiences to help me uh, determine that being, med being a doctor was for me and going into medicine was for me. So. As I mentioned before, I wasn't somebody that always was interested in going into medicine, and I'll talk about that a little bit in my personal statement here. So the beginning, uh, I wanted to, and many people talk about this as something being a key element, uh, starting off with a captivating sentence to really grab that attention. For me, uh, I started off here, I said, on a fall evening as a college sophomore, I sat motionless in my dorm room, staring into the eyes of isolation and doubt. As a lost and lonely version of myself, I was forced to come up with the answers to my uncertainties. So I wanted to tell the reader that, hey, I am in a place where I'm uncertain. I'm kind of lost and kind of paint this picture of somebody that doesn't know what they're uh, want to do uh, and kind of lead it into that. So I was talking about and go further about how college basketball no longer had my heart. I wasn't challenging myself to improve. I was burning for something new. So I'm kind of building up into, I want to change. I want to improve. I, I want to build that story and build that narrative of somebody that's changing. And this is something that uh, really portrayed to my story and was something that was huge in my story, kind of growing and kind of changing into uh, that direction towards medicine. 
So I talk about here, a career in athletic training no longer intrigued me. I yearned for more. So continuing in, into that uh, yearning for more and kind of wanting more for myself. I had a love for medicine and patient care, but craved more responsibility and autonomy. And this is a big sentence here because I'm talking about in this sentence, I, I'm craving being a physician. I don't directly say it, but I indirectly talk about the responsibilities of a physician with somebody that has responsibility and somebody that can make decisions for their for themselves. So contrasting to athletic training, where a lot of the decisions and the ultimate uh, decisions are made by you know, the, the physician, um, I wanted that. I wanted somebody to be somebody that had that autonomy and wanted to have that responsibility. So going ahead, furthermore, I wanted to be able to submerge myself in something greater than myself, lending a hand to many. So just referring to my interest in serving others. And that evening, growth was inevitable, tying back to growth again. And although a promising college basketball career was ahead of me, I decided to trade in my college basketball jersey, transfer to Stony Brook University and commit to becoming a physician. So that talks about how, like I said, the growth. I wanted to show that my main theme was growth. My main theme was uncovering that I wanted more and chasing that uh, while also making the sacrifice to give up something that I, I was passionate about and what something that I loved. So the next uh, paragraph, I wanted to kind of take a step back. So that was me kind of talking about the overarching goal of my personal statement, but I wanted to take a step back and kind of start from the beginning, kind of like a movie uh, script where they tell you the end, they tell you the overarching goal, and then they kind of take a step back. So in this next paragraph, I took a step back and I talked about admittingly becoming a physician was never at the forefront of my goals. A family friend first introduced me to airplanes at a young age, and it was a matter of time before I wanted to become a pilot. Years later, I dabbled in becoming a lawyer due to my frequent urge to debate in the nature of my household, where a sound argument was the only way of convincing my mom to let me do things my way. Eventually, my lawyer dreams began to fade, and I was left in a state of ambiguity. So I talk about here how I was kind of just like a kid that was interested in many different things, and, and, and I wanted to kind of paint the picture of that I didn't always want to become a physician, and I really dabbled in different things. And I'm, I'm, I'm a multidimensional person. Uh, and I want to indirectly say that kind of stuff with those sentences there. Um, I also drew in uh, a little comedic relief and something that a lot of people can relate to where, you know, arguing with your parents to get your way. Uh, I want to, you know, throw in a little bit of comedic relief there. So I hope that, you know, actually worked. I don't know if it actually did, but eventually my lawyer dreams began to fade. I was left in a state of ambiguity. So I was lost. Again, another uh, thing of being lost, but how I was going an interest in science and some simultaneously fell in love with athletics. Little did I know I would eventually have to sacrifice one to pursue the other. And as I dove headfirst into my emerging love for science and medicine, my experiences helped direct my passions and fuel my desires to become a physician. So this is really me just talking about how I initially went from somebody that, you know, was interested in, in science and, and, and athletics and becoming a pilot, lawyer, whatever, and just being able to dive head first into my love for science and medicine, you know, getting the chance to transfer schools and commit to becoming a physician, I was now able to, you know, direct my passions and feel my desire to become a physician through my experiences. So we'll go to the next paragraph. In this paragraph, I'm really just talking about my experiences as uh, a pre-med student and how I uh, got in all these experiences and how they tailored my, my interest in uh, becoming a doctor. So I talked about here in my next paragraph, transferring colleges gave me the opportunity to explore new territory and a new mentality. So again, referring back to me changing, me improving my life, me uh, improving my men's mind mindset and uh, you know going after this goal you know, head on. I soon became a certif certified personal trainer cherishing the fulfilling feeling of helping people of all backgrounds become a better version of themselves. Um, this is just talking about my love and interest of why I want to be a personal, state, uh, personal trainer, but it's also referring to and sharing characteristics that would make me a good doctor. So this is me talking about why I would be a good doctor, but not directly saying, hey, I would be a good doctor because I cherish the fulfilling feeling of helping people. It's just me explaining myself and explaining my experiences, but also indirectly you know, giving the reader a feeling of why I would be a good doctor. I also returned to my high school alma mater to mentor and train student athletes. Personal training taught me many aspects of professionalism as being well-read, reassuring, and altruistic all go a long way in gaining a client's trust. Once again, parallel to being a physician, well-read, reassuring, altruistic, all things that physicians hold, but I'm not directly saying it. I'm talking about it being a professional uh, and gaining a client's trust, or maybe, you know, parallel, gaining a patient's trust. 
Um, by working closely with clients that had health conditions such as diabetes, osteoarthritis, arthritis, and obesity, I had firsthand exposure to the beautiful integrations of medicine. As a personal trainer, I had a, it was crucial that I tailored my health, the health plans of every client around their medical history and capabilities. Again, that parallel with a physician. With this specificity, I was able to implement proper diet and exercise to help reduce the blood glucose levels of a pre-diabetic woman and help a high school athlete uh, post menisectomy return to playing basketball at a high level. The tremendous feeling of going to work and be able to guide someone in improving their well-being was a first addictive taste of what a physician could entail. So you see how I wrapped it up at the end there, uh, kind of wrapping it back to why I want to become a doctor and how this you know, inched me further into uh, my career as a physician it's me closer to hey i really really want this i really want to be able to have this addictive feeling of being able to treat somebody and and bring them from being sick or being hurt to their ultimate goal which is being healthy and being active so that was something that i wanted to tie in at the very end so that addictive feeling of you know oh i want to i want to be able to do that for the rest of my life i want to paint that picture with this paragraph so continuing as a pre-med student I began to participate in undergrad research, gaining a new appreciation for science. Over the course of a year as an undergrad researcher, I gradually took on more responsibility. So this is just, this is, this is just me talking about my responsibility in the lab. Uh, ultimately rewarded uh, American Heart Association Research Fellowship to lead my own project. This allowed me a chance to take more initiative and grow as both a leader and a scientist and hone essential skills in communication. So again, indirectly talking about the things that I gained from my research experience, but not talking about how it would make me a better doctor, just kind of telling indirectly, you know, what I gained from uh, my research. Working on several projects over two years period, opened my mind to the groundbreaking sides of science and medicine that I, I had been missing. So this is another thing where I felt I wanted to show that I'm not only passionate about, you know, taking care of people and kind of bringing them from sick to healthy, but also I was somebody that appreciated science and, and through research was able to gain a different perspective on science uh, through my experience with research. So I wanted to make sure I added that in there. And I felt that was an important element in my story uh, personally, because I did feel that uh, doing research kind of gave me that different perspective in science. So the next paragraph was another experience that kind of brought me closer and closer. So now you're seeing that the first thing being a personal trainer brought me closer. Research gave me another perspective. Now we're going into a more uh, clinical space where I was able to see what a doctor does and how that pinched me even further. So working as a summer research intern under Dr. Galata at the Hospital for Special Surgery cemented my passion for medicine even more. So now I'm talking about how it was, you know, being ingrained, but now it's being cemented. Um, with this opportunity, I was able to work closely with him, studying shoulder pathology and surgical treatments. Dr. Galata always gave his patients the utmost respect, made him, them feel comfortable while being calm and charismatic. I was had the chance to witness his attention to detail and preparation, engaging patient interactions and meticulous surgical procedures. So I was just describing everything that I witnessed as I you know, worked closely with him and shadowed him. And what I valued in a physician. So this was just me telling uh, the admissions committees, hey, this is what I believe makes a great physician. These are the things that I value in a, in a physician. And that may be different uh, for you, but this is just what I want to highlight, uh, you know, his utmost respect, them making feel comfortable, being charismatic, calm, under pressure, uh, attention to detail, um, things that I just uh, gravitated towards. And I told a little story here, you know, while shadowing during my internship, I remember Dr. DeFelice performing a hip replacement as he explained to me how surgery is the controlled damage of the body so we can grow back stronger exactly the way we wanted to. Uh, this immediately lit a spark in me that has stuck with me ever since. And I wanted to kind of share that story of and share that quote, kind of giving an inside look of, you know, what exactly uh I felt during those moments, so the control damage of the body, and it kind of was synonymous to a lot of the stuff that I was doing with personal training, how you know, we're breaking down the body, we're breaking down the muscle in order to, for it to grow back stronger, the same thing with surgery. Uh, it immediately lit a spark in me, and as I was exposed to more surgery and patient care, I now began to envision myself as a physician and began identifying the mannerisms that I wish to express to my patients and fellow medical staff one day. So like I mentioned before, kind of getting exposed to these things that I wanted to elicit one day and wanted to express to those around me one day and how I really soaked it all in to really have a clear vision of what I wanted as a physician. So now this is the conclusion paragraph and it seems like when I'm reading this back, it feels like everything goes by so quickly because it's only 5,300 characters, but 
um this is the conclusion here and it's important in the conclusion to kind of like sum up everything that you talk about really make that final stamp uh on your personal statement so i talked about how my overall theme is to kind of show that i'm inching closer and closer and how my experiences kind of help mold me and i talked about that in my conclusion here everything began to click for me uh, medicine which i previously viewed as simply words and mechanisms on the page now became a com combination of compassionate care for patients research commitment and a love for what you do all these things that i was able to witness as i was shadowing as i was doing research experience as i was doing personal training experiences um and i wanted to show that i in initially was naive i initially didn't really see things as you know as detailed and multi-dimensional as they were but as i gained more experiences and everything began to click it was now compassionate care it was now research commitment love for what i did and this is exactly what i envisioned myself uh for myself after my, my, my experiences i was no longer solely passionate but about becoming a physician but i was dedicated to it a dedication that would continue to push me through challenges in medical school and postgraduate training these experiences have allowed me to witness the integration of science into medical scenarios and have motivated me to pursue medicine following the footsteps of the great physicians that have come before me so not terrible uh not a bad conclusion and i think that this really shows you know just me co combining everything in, in the end and kind of showing that everything kind of came together and everything has now pushed me even further to uh, want to pursue medicine even harder because I've gone through all of these different things. So that is my personal statement. And I wanted to kind of break it down in that way and in a detailed fashion in order to kind of give you guys the perspective and maybe the mindset that you may want to use when you're kind of attacking your personal statement if you have any specific questions of you know how to strategize for your personal statement or, or if your story is captivating or how to craft your story feel free to reach out to me via email i'm glad to help any of you guys thank you again if you made it to the end of this video make sure you subscribe and like the video if you enjoy it i'm putting out weekly videos just like this one every single week so make sure you stay tuned and subscribe thank you again for watching and let's get it good luck everyone